the dictatorship of transparency. Initially, the internet was celebrated as a medium of boundless liberty. Microsoft's early advertising slogan, Where do you want to go today? suggested unlimited freedom and mobility on the web. As it turned out, such euphoria was an illusion. Today, unbounded freedom and communication are switching over into total control and surveillance. More and more, social media resemble digital panoptica, keeping watch over the social realm and exploiting it mercilessly. We had just freed ourselves from the disciplinary panopticon, and we threw ourselves into a new and even more efficient panopticon. Jeremy Bentham's panopticon isolated inmates from each other for disciplinary purposes and prevented them from interacting. In contrast, the occupant the occupants of today's digital panopticon actively communicate with each other and willingly expose themselves. That is, they collaborate in the digital panopticon's operations. Digital Control Society makes, us, makes intensive use of freedom. This can only occur thanks to voluntary self-illumination and self-exposure. Digital Big Brother outsources operations to inmates, as it were. Accordingly, data is not surrendered under duress so much as offered out of an inner need. That is why the digital panopticon proves so efficient. Transparency is demanded in the name of freedom of information, too. In reality, however, this amounts to nothing other than a neoliberal dispositive. It means turning everything inside out by force and transforming it into information. Under the immaterial mode of production that now prevails, more information and more communication mean more productivity acceleration, and growth. Information represents a positive value, and as much as it lacks interior interiority, it can circulate independently, free from any and all context. Accordingly, the circulation of information admits acceleration at will, for purely arbitrary reasons. Secrets, foreignness, and others, otherness represent impediments to unbounded communication. In the name of transparency, they are to be eliminated. Communication goes faster when it is smoothed out. That is, when thresholds, walls, and gaps are removed. This also means stripping people of interiority, which blocks and slows down communication. However, such emptying out of persons does not occur by violent means. Instead, it occurs as voluntary self-exposure. The negativity of otherness or foreignness is de-interiorized and transformed into the positivity of communicable and consumable difference, diversity. The dispositive of transparency affects utter exteriorization in order to accelerate the circulation of information and speed communication. Ultimately, openness facilitates unrestricted communication, whereas closeness, reserve, and and interiority obstructed. The dispositive of transparency has the further consequence of promoting total conformity. The economy of transparency seeks to suppress deviation. Total networking, total communication already has a leveling effect per se. Its effect is conformity. It is as if, it is as if everyone were watching over everyone else, even before intelligent Intelligence agencies or secret services have stepped in to supervise and steer. Invisible moderators smooth out communication and calibrate it to what is generally understood and accepted. Such primary intrinsic surveillance proves much more problematic than secondary extrinsic surveillance undertaken by secret services and spying agencies. Neoliberalism makes citizens into consumers. The freedom of the citizen yields to the passivity of the consumer. As consumers, today's voters have no real interest in politics in actively shaping the community. They possess neither the will nor the ability to participate in communal political action. They react only passively to politics, grumbling and complaining as consumers do about a commodity or a service they do not like. Politicians and parties follow this logic of consumption too. They have to deliver. 
In the process, they become nothing more than suppliers. Their task is to satisfy voters who are consumers or customers. The transparency demanded of politicians today is anything but a political demand. Transparency is not called for in political decision-making processes. No consumer is interested in that. Instead, and above all, the imperative of transparency serves to expose or unmask politicians, to make them an item of scandal. The call for transparency presupposes occupying the position of a shocked spectator. It is not voiced by engaged citizens so much as by passive onlookers. Participation now amounts to grievance and complaint. With that, the society of transparency, inhabited by onlookers and consumers, has given rise to a spectator democracy. An, ins an essential component of freedom is informational self-determination. The 1984 ruling on the census made by the German Federal Constitutional Court already declared if citizens cannot know who knows what, when, and on what occasion about them, the right to information self-determination is incompatible with social order and the legal order facilitating the same. That said, this ruling was made at a time when people commonly believed they were facing the state as an instance of domination, which wrested information from citizens against their will. Such a time is long past. Today, we voluntarily expose ourselves without any external constraint at all, without an edict commanding us to do so. Of our own free will, we put any and all conceivable information about ourselves on the internet, without having the slightest idea who knows what, when, or on what occasion. This lack of control represents a crisis of freedom to be taken seriously. And indeed, given the data that people make available willy-nilly, the very idea of protecting privacy is becoming obsolete. Today we are entering the age of digital psychopolitics. It means passing from passive surveillance to active steering. As such, it is precipitating a further crisis of freedom. Now, free will itself is at stake. Big data is highly efficient is a highly efficient psychopolitical instrument that makes it possible to achieve comprehensive knowledge of the dynamics of social communication. This knowledge is knowledge for the sake of domination and control. It facilitates intervention in the psyche and enables influence to take place on a pre-reflexive level. For human beings to be able to act freely, the future must be open. However, big data is making it possible to predict human behavior. This means that the future is becoming calculable and controllable. Digital psychopolitics transforms the negativity of freely made decisions into the positivity of factual states. Indeed, persons are being positivized into things which can be quantified, measured, and steered. Needless to say, no thing can be free. But at the same time, things are more transparent than persons. Big Data has announced the end of the person who possesses free will. Every dispositive, every technology or technique of domination brings forth characteristic devotional objects that are employed in order to subjugate. Such objects materialize and stabilize dominion. Devotion and related words mean submission or obedience. Smartphones represent digital devotion indeed. They are the devotional objects of the digital, period. As a subjectivation apparatus, the smartphone works like a rosary, which, because of its ready availability, represents a handheld device, too. Both the smartphone and the rosary serve the purpose of self-monitoring and control. Power operates more effectively when it delegates surveillance to discrete individuals. Like is the digital, amen. When we click like, we are bowing down to the order of domination. The smartphone is not just an effective surveillance apparatus. It is also a mobile confessional. Facebook is the church, the global synagogue, literally assembly of the digital. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.